السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ علانیمت الاسلامی وقفا بحانیما آل پریز ان گریٹیٹیوڈ بی ٹو اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ آن ہز بلیسنگ آف اسلام وتھ سفائز ایز اے بلیسنگ سو وی آر دا نائنٹینتھ پارا ناؤ اینڈ وی ڈوئنگ سورہ الفرقان ڈن اپ ٹو آئٹ نمبر ٹوینٹی ان شاء اللہ ول بگن ود آئٹ ٹوینٹی ون فرقان لٹرلی مینز کرائٹیرین وچ ڈسٹنگوش بٹوین رائٹ اینڈ رانگ and furqan is also one of the names of quran like there are other names zikra which is a reminder or al kitab the book uh, al nur which is a light or hudan guidance all these are names and furqan happens to be one of them so let's just begin with that number 21 a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim wa qala alladhina la yarjuna liqa'ana lawla unzila alayna al malaikatu aw nara rabbana لقد استكبر في انفسهم واتوا اتوا كبيرا ان ذا نيم اوف الله ذا موست بينيفيسنت ذا موست مرسيفول سيد ذوز هو ديد نوت اكسبكت تو ميت اس واي ذا انجلز ار نوت سينت داون تو اس واي دو وي نوت سي اور لورد انديد ذا ثينك تو هايلي اوف ذيم سيلفز هافينج غون تو فار ان ريبيليون سو ذس از ا يو نو قران از اكشلي ديسكرايبينج ذوز بيبل هو ار كونستانتلي اسكينج فور نيو ثينجز بيفور ذي بيليف Uh, why don't the angels come down? Why don't we see our Creator? Now, such people have neither a desire nor a hope of meeting their Rabb. Only such people talk in this, in this kind of a manner. They demand to see their Rabb. Uh, also has an element of pride over here, and that's what Quran thinks, that they think too highly of themselves, that they have this element of pride. As long as pride is there, it's hard for guidance to, to come into our hearts. Uh, and they don't accept uh, they don't want to accept uh, a message uh, from the messenger and as a result they are making all sorts of excuses the day they will see the angels there will be no good news for for the sinners that day and they will say we need a shelter fully protected so their wish ultimately will be granted they will actually see the angels at at one point in time but on that day they will really not feel happy or satisfied that their wish has been accepted and when they see the angels they will say oh we need a fully protected shelter please protect us or go away and we will proceed to whatever deeds they did and will render them into scattered dust so quran refers to these very small particles uh, which which are which are really invisible and actually uh, relates those invisible particles that are there to the kind of deeds these people do now these are the particles the quran the arabic word that quran uses over here you know it is uh, 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 it's like these particles are so small that you can only see them when the sunlight falls and i think we all may have witnessed when the sun is light is coming through a glass in a dark room you see all these small particles that are floating in it now these are weightless these are scattered these are kind of useless so when deeds are done for the sake of, you know for the sake of this world or for any other sake but done not for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala then deeds are these deeds are actually valueless deeds and they are as light and weightless and scattered as these particles that we see over here and apparently these may be very priceless uh, they may have benefited uh, humanity they may have resulted in getting fame and fortune for someone they may have been praised to the sky but the value in the sight of allah for such deeds is nothing and the reason for this is that if deeds are done for uh, you know earning worldly benefit then that worldly benefit has been earned they have, why have an expectation from allah they weren't done for for the pleasure of allah so if they were not done for the pleasure of allah for the if they were done for the benefit of the world then the reward has already been given the people of paradise on that day will be will be the best in terms of their abode and best in terms of their resting place the day the sky breaks open with clouds and the angels will be sent down in a majestic descent the kingdom on that day will be for the rahman and it will be a difficult day for the disbelievers so clearly a very very tough day and a difficult day as quran mentions over here for the disbelievers and be mindful of the day the wrong doers will bite his hand saying would that i had taken a path along with the messenger now you see the regret and remorse over here uh, for those people who were the wrong doers or the disbelievers on that day uh, and the quran uses the word zalim over here the condition of the zalim is being described over here and who are these unjust just people quran also actually tells us that that these people are the one who actually uh, you know didn't really adopt the way of the messenger 
the one who considers it to be an insult today to adopt the day of the, the way of the messenger, those people will be there and it will be a source of great regret for them. Woe be to me, would that I had not taken so and so for my friend. Now you can see over here that the, the kind of regret people will have for the wrong friendships in this world. What should be our standard for making a friend? I think that's the question that we really need to think through very care carefully. The company of people we have, we begin to think uh, according to those, according to our friends. Our importance, our, our priorities will begin to change. If our friends love Allah, if that's the kind of company that we are in, they, they, then we will also try and bring love of Allah in our hearts. If not, then people will become rivals of Allah and on the day of judgment, people will have great regret that they were under the influence of such friends and what a great loss these, this company and these friends have brought upon them, these people. Indeed, he led me astray from the advice after it had come to me, and the, and the shaitan is man's betrayer. So a very severe warning over, the, over here that if a, friendship, if a friendship is encouraging a person in sin and in disobedience, then this will be a source of great regret on the day of judgment. Now, in this world, uh, the company of such people may seem very bold and interesting. Very interesting. You know, such people sometimes are very interesting company because they, they have that, that element uh, of attraction. Uh, and if people are defying Allah in the name of confidence, in the name of logic, they are dissecting sunnah and hadith so that they can prove this to be illogic. And then there is sleaze and trash, which becomes a sign, sign of, of being very liberal and very enlightened. I think that's the kind of company that Quran is actually warning people, that people will actually uh, regret on that particular day that they took the advice. Now for such people, obviously understanding Quran is uh, quite a waste of time. Uh, the only author that they don't want to mention is the author of Quran. Rest all the authors they will discuss in the company, whether it is people who write trash like Sidney Sheldon or Ma James Mitchell or whoever, but the author of Quran is someone that they don't want to discuss. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنِّي قَوْمِتْ تَخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورَ And the messenger will say, Oh my Lord, my people have had taken this Quran as a, thing, as a forsaken thing. So this is, this is the response of the messenger. This is the response of the messenger. If that the messenger will actually be a witness and say, Oh my Lord, my people had taken this Quran as a mahjur, as a forsaken thing. So just think about the amount of time people spend in kind of useless pursuits, right? People will spend time reading these frivolous newspapers, carefully reading them, knowing that this news will become stale and useless in, a, in, a, in an hour's time. And Whereas Quran is an akhbar which gives news about Nabaul Azim, this great day. News of the present world, news of the future, news that can, can never be outdated. Now this book is uh, often not read and when it is, it is read, it is read without thinking and without pondering, without really reflecting on what this book is saying. How important it is for us to read and not just to read but to think about the message of Quran. You know if someone tells us that in such and such new newspaper your, your news has come, we will scan that paper, we will make sure everyone else, else also reads it. Everyone else knows that my name has come in this newspaper and this is the news over here. Why don't we have this kind of a shock or why don't we have this kind of a desire to know what Allah has written because this is a book about us. Quran is our identity as a Muslim and we are really very oblivious of, of this identity. And today when we look at the Muslims, the, the, you know, the issues that are facing, uh, facing the Muslim Ummah, it's an identity crisis. Like today there is a great cause and I think we all fully support that, that uh, you know, anyone who is illiterate, he must be taught and made literate. And that's an excellent cause. Similarly, this is a bigger cause. There is another bigger cause on that, and that is to make people Quran literate. In a similar way, we have made for every prophet an arch enemy from among the sinners, but your Lord suffices as a guide and as a supporter. Those who disbelieve said, why has Quran not been revealed to him all at once? 
it has been sent down in this way which means in parts so that we can make your hearts firm and revealed it little by little so people objecting why quran has come in portions over such a long period of time uh, there are many reasons for that first and foremost obviously is absorption we when uh, things come slowly over a period of time it gives us gives us time to absorb change is a very difficult thing it's a slow process and so therefore quran coming in smaller portion it is easier to uh, absorb and absorption is only for the purpose of making a change it also makes our heart firm there's a lot of peace and comfort. So it's a revelation of Quran over a long period of time gave that comfort in face of the opposition that our Prophet and the Muslims were facing. The, it's a source of comfort for in, in, in every difficulty. Quran is a, is a great support. It's a friend for every person who goes out in the way of Allah. And when he suffers aches and pains and ridicules of people, Quran comes in as a support and as a, as a friend. Then there are many questions that actually keep coming into our mind. There are doubts that actually are raised in our mind. Whenever in such a state we open the Quran and even read it in a random way, we will find a lot of solace, we will find a lot of counsel, it will remove doubts and hesitations that are there. And find, last but not the least, this is the, you know, when we read Quran and we understand, we, we are hearing the voice of the Creator through His Kalam. We can feel, feel His nearness and protection surrounding us when we read the Quran. They bring to you no similitude, but we bring to you the correct position and the best explanation. Those who will be driven on their faces to hell, they are the worst in the situation and far more astray from the path. Surely we gave Moses the book and appointed his brother Harun as an aide with him. Now the word used over here, appointed, which means uh, made him the wazir. Uh, so we get a wazir, we get an advisor, we get a guide, we get a counsel, and uh, that's a great thing. You know, that's a great thing to have someone as an advisor. And particularly if you get assistance from someone who is part of your family, who's part of your of your home, it really makes things very easy because there's a strong element of trust over there. You know you'll get the best advice. You'll get, know you'll get the most appropriate advice, and this should be. Actually, this should be actually part of our prayer. We must pray that Allah supports us from, from, from someone from within our own families. So we, said, so we said, go both of you to the people who have rejected our signs and then we annihilated them totally. So messengers are themselves uh, a, a great sign. Really messengers, their character, their temperament, their sincerity, their selflessness is extraordinary and special. So nations that do not accept the messengers uh, and reject, uh, and you know, they are really rejecting a clear sign, then as a result, they deserve a punishment. Particularly for people who are present with the, me with the messenger, they have a great responsibility and accountability. As for the people of Nu, when they rejected the messenger, we drowned them and made them an example for mankind, and we have prepared a painful punishment for the transgressors. So now, referring to the people of Nu, the earlier first nation that was destroyed, and the Ad and the Samud and the people of Ras and many generations in between them. To each of them we cited examples, and each of them we brought to utter ruins. So many of these destroyed nations that have been mentioned, the Ad, Samud, uh, Samud uh, and you know, uh, people of uh, uh, Ras and others, many of these nations, the, you know, the ruins of this have been discovered. It's like Sodom and Amora, uh, you know, where Hazrat Dut was sent. These ruins have been discovered and other ruins there was people of Madi and the ruins are there. Those uh, people do visit these ruins. But how many people have accepted Islam after seeing these ruins? It's, it's not really just like a, uh, you know, a trip over there. Uh, for, for a touristic reason, but these are the places that if these ruins people see, it should be for the purpose of Ibrat. Indeed, they have passed by the town that was afflicted by the evil rain sent down to it. Did they not see it? Rather, they, they do not believe in resurrection. When they see you, they take you only as a laughing stock, saying, is this the man whom Allah has sent as a messenger? Now this is a disbeliever's typical style of a disbeliever who were, you know, who had contempt and disrespect and mockery for our Prophet Sallallahu and that's true for every Prophet that the, the nation who didn't believe in them, that's the kind of contempt and disrespect that they showed for every messenger. They find it strange that a poor man can be sent as a messenger. In their eyes, the khair is only, only one thing and that is wealth and status, rest is all unimportant and, and irrelevant. 
again we note that the focus is not on the message but instead on what the personality or what the messenger has. Now this is a way that Allah tries people. For example, instead of making Hazrat Musa as a prophet, Allah could have easily chosen Firon and made him the prophet. But then it would be unclear who accepted Islam for the truth and who was influenced by the power and the wealth and the position of Firon. You know, they say nothing succeeds like success and everyone wants to join the successful, successful people. He would have almost led us astray from our God had we not adhered to them patiently, they will know when they will see the punishment who is further uh, astray from the path. Now this is the power of truth. Truth is magnetic. It's really compelling. It's, it's uh, undeniable. But why don't people accept? Because truth, you know, with truth people have to change their lifestyle. And change of lifestyle is a very difficult thing. So how do they justify their attitude? They say, we are now dedicated and committed to the cause of these deities. And that's what they're saying, that we would have almost gone astray from our God, from our deities, had we not adhered patiently. So they believe they have a cause, they are committed to a cause. Even Hitler had a cause, right? Hitler also had a cause. He did zulm on so many people. And he used to say, I'm loyal to my cause. He wanted to purify humanity from such scum. And he said, I want to have a pure, pure race, the German pure race, creating a pure race. And so he also had a cause, but just being adhering to a cause is not good enough if that cause is, is, uh, is not a good cause. Tell me about the one who has taken his, his desire as, a, as his God. Would you then become a guardian for him? Now this ayat has got an element of surprise and astonishment uh, in it. You know, imagine making, making our desires as our God, the one worship. We worship our likes and dislikes. You know, many people say that religion is a personal matter. This is between me and my, my Allah and my God, which is fine. But if this was true, then there was no need for Allah to send down any messenger or any book. But Allah would have said to them, okay, you do deeds according to your own standard just to make, make Allah happy. That could have been way. But what kind of a life that, that such people would have led? The more people follow their desire, the more slave they become of their, of their khwaishats. <clears throat> now, this doesn't mean that all desires are to be shunned and rejected and we live like monks and forsake all the good things. Islam is not, uh, is, you know, doesn't want to strangle and kill desires, but it wants us to control them and that the desires should not control us. That's the only message of Islam. You control the desire, don't let them control, control you. Now, there's a very strong encouragement in Islam to do things uh, in a beautiful way, in art, in culture, in buildings, in mosques, in gardens, in everything, that you must do everything in a beautiful way because Allah has created everything in this universe in the most exquisite, you know, exquisite manner. And he expects man to use his creative abilities. Or do you think that most of them listen or understand? They are but like cattle, rather they are, they are even further away from the right, further astray from the right way. Now, if the entire objective of life is indulgence and gratification with no higher aim, then man is like an animal because uh, they eat, they drink, drink uh, they procreate and then they die. In fact, they, man can be much worse because if, uh, if, if uh, men are not controlled by the restrictions of Allah, he's far more destructive, far more greedy and far more cruel. Have you not observed how your Lord stretched out the shadows? If he so willed, he could have made it stationary. And then we, then we made the sun as a guide. Then we pulled it uh, towards us in a gradual manner. So everything, the universe being pulled and you know, slowly collapsing, the entire galaxy being collapsing, is the reference being put over here. He is the one who has made the night an apparel for you and, and the sleep as a means of rest. And he has made the day means of revival. So night is there, uh, we, you know, we cut off all our activities, we cut tiredness when we sleep at night, we cut the fatigue. Nighttime uh, sleep is the best sleep. No matter how much we sleep during the day, uh, it really cannot compensate for a good night's sleep. And this is the nizam of Allah that besides men, all creation of Allah go to sleep at night. In the birds, the animal, even the plants actually sleep at night. And he is the one who has sent down the wind conveying good news before his mercy. And we have sent down purifying water from the heavens. So that we revive a dead land with it 
and give drink to many cattle and human created by us. And we have repeated this to them that they may remember. But most people are averse except denying. So Allah has created everything, the sun, the moon, the, the rain, the night, the day, all for the benefit of mankind. And, 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 and no one is really uh, deprived of them. This is given to every. All these benefits are given to everyone. It's not just for a selected few. Everything is there for the benefit of man. But, but the more Allah gives to people, the more rebellion and the more defined men, men become. Had we so willed, we would have raised a warner for them, uh, for every town. People can see that, uh, that, uh, that one sun can brighten and illuminate the entire earth. Similarly, one messenger can bring guidance uh, to be a source of, of light illuminating the entire world. So the Risalat of our Prophet is for all people because truth is not for a single group of people, not for a single nation, but for the entire mankind. So do not obey the infidels and strive against them with it, which means with the Quran, in utmost endeavors. Now the word that's used over here, which is translated as jihad, you know, do jihad against them with this Quran. Jihad is one of the most misunderstood realities or the most misunderstood concept of Islam. It's literally when you use this word jihad is always perceived as a war. Now since wars are not fought every day, hence Muslim assume that jihad is not, uh, you know, is not needed. It's not something compulsory. Now here it is stated that do jihad with Quran. So what is uh, this revelation referring to? The meaning of jihad is to struggle, to strive with, you know, utmost striving to the point of exhaustion. Our Prophet Sallallahu in, in a, one of the hadiths, our Prophet was asked, which jihad is the highest? And he said that you jih do jihad against your own nafs and make it obedient to Allah. Hence the first jihad is against our own nafs. One who does not accomplish this stage and wants to bypass it, it will, he will never be successful. The next jihad is to struggle and to toil with Quran and against or with the society and that's, that's the important part. First it's upon your own self, you know, make yourself submit, submit to Allah, make your own nafs submit to Allah and then struggle against the society. You know, there are social pressures, there are peer pressures, there are all sorts of pressures when we live in a society. So societies push people in a particular direction. It's like a crowd moving in one direction. And it's very easy to move with that crowd in that direction. With little effort, with almost like no effort, one gets pushed along. But if obedience of Allah is important, then one has to move sometimes against the tide. And now there will be resistance, and now there will be opposition, and now there will be confrontation. So basically to do jihad against, uh, against the society, against, uh, against our own nafs, Quran must be our imam. It must lead us from the front. So it is so important for us to spread the translation of Quran. This will really have a positive effect on people. It will bring about a change of people. It will also minimize the kind of risk, you know, the shirk that is prevalent in our societies. He is the one who joined the two seas. So one is bitter, quenches thirst by its sweetness, and the other is saltish, bitter and made between them a buffer and an inviolable barrier. So this ayat refers to a barrier between the two streams of water, uh, you know, and, lets them f and uh, let, them, let the water flow parallel without mixing. The barrier between the two, which prevents the sweet water from mixing with the salt water. And this will, this people can actually, you can see, you can see it in the Mississippi, you can see it in the Yangtze, you know, these rivers that when they mix with the oceans, uh, they continue to flow, the fresh water and the, and the sweet water are flowing next to uh, each other, the sweet and the saltish water. And he is the one who creates man from water, then he, then he has made from, uh, for him uh, relations created by lineage and marriage, your Lord is all powerful. So Quran refers to the relationships, particularly the relationships of in-laws which are created because of marriage and that's a great blessing and they must be maintained. And uh, we must treat our in-laws like, like we treat our own family. They should, be, they should be, you know, loyalty, they should be closeness between us and them. And this is a test in the, there is a test also in these relationships. 
that whether we fulfill the, our rights and responsibilities. You know, today, unfortunately, as we have progressed and science has, and uh, you know, economy has progressed, the concept of a nucleus family is there. The husband, the wife, and the children. Uh, this has its own challenges. Obviously, it has its advantage. It has its own challenges and its own problems. What we do agree is that everyone does have a right of, uh, of independence. Certainly, everyone has to have its own, his own or her own space. But it shouldn't be at the cost of being indifferent to the close relationships we have. Like we have, uh, you know, close relation with our father, mother, brothers, sisters, etc. With our, with our wife, her mother, her father, her sister, etc. And then also the fact is that husbands really have no right to prevent their wife from visiting her parents or calling her brothers and sisters. They worship instead of Allah, what can neither give them any benefit nor cause them any harm. The disbeliever is ever a partisan against his Lord. We didn't send you, but as a bearer of good news and as a warner, say, I do not demand from, from you any return except that the one may choose uh, a way to his Lord. So mess messengers are on a mission. They are selflessly wanting the benefit of, uh, you know, benefit for all people. They want people to correct their relationship with Allah. They want people to, to have true worship and to practice righteous action. The place you trust in the ever living who cannot die and proclaim his purity along with his praise and sufficient is he as a knower of the sins of his servants. The one who created in six days the heavens and the earth and whatever lies between them, then he positioned himself on the throne. He is the Rahman, so ask any knowledgeable about him. And when it is said to them, prostrate yourself to the Rahman, they say, what is Rahman? Shall we prostrate to what you, you command us? And it increases nothing in them except aversion. So this is an ayat sajda over here. Now the attitude of people is that the world uh, should bow down to them, that they should be praised, recognized and given all credit. And it's a very strange uh, thing, you know. What a strange thing that one who discovers the stars and the sun and the moon is praised to the sky. And not a word about the creator of the sun and the moon and the stars. Not a word. You know, this is what godless education does to people. This is what godless knowledge does to people. It only gives them pride. They are averse to the remembrance of Allah. There is no recognition of Allah. And if someone reminds them, people have sometimes get upset. They really get offended. Glorious is the one who has made constellations in the sky and placed therein a lamp and the bright moon. And he is the one who has made the day and the night and the night following each other for the one who wishes to be mindful or wishes to show gratitude. So all credit really belongs to Allah. If we want to show credit, we need to show credit to Allah. No matter how much godless people try and take credit, Allah created it so that they, and then they got the opportunity to discover things. He made the sun, He made the moon, He made the stars, and He made all the cons constellations. So that people are discovering and taking this credit and getting all the izzat. Now people who turn away from the reminder of Allah, they themselves are the losers. And the servants of Rahman are those who walk on the earth humbly and when ignorant people speak to them, the, the, the reply, they reply peacefully or they reply peace. So the next five ayahs, including Sayyid 63, describes the mature personality of a moment. And it's a, it's a really a beautiful personality, a person who's going to be very calm and very peaceful. So the servants of Allah, first and foremost, they're not slaves of their own desires. They're also not slaves of people. But they de display modesty, they display humbleness and humility. This is displayed in their mannerism. They have a calm and a dignified personality, no pride, no show off. The next quality, when the ignorant and, and, and the bad-mannered people speak to them, what these people say, the Ibad or Rahman, they say Salam. There is steadiness in their temperament. They do not stoop to the level of the uncouth and the ill-mannered, but they say Salam to them. And those who pass the night prostrating themselves and standing before their Lord, now, why is it not said that they do this in during daytime? Because the Ibad or Rahman stay in the mosque all day. Who's going to work? Right? 
So extremely important that, that we have the right uh, concept of a righteous person. Righteous is one who is really professional. That's the righteous person in Islam. And if, who does worship at night and who gets up at night and you know, says tahajjud. We must say tahajjud once in a while. If not every day, at least once a week or once a month. But we must actually practice and do these night prayers. And does everything beautifully for the sake of pleasing Allah. And those who say our Lord avert us the punishment of Jahannam, indeed its punishment is a persistent affliction. Indeed it's an evil as an abode and, and a place of two dwellings. So if the, the, the entire life of, of Ibad rahman is spent, uh, you know, is lived according to the commandments of Allah, yet they are still not unafraid of the punishment of Allah. Please remember, dua is an extremely important thing. Dua actually shows your priorities. So for their dua, we see that such people, their key priority is the hereafter. And after doing all the good things, all the good things, they still pray to Allah and they are still afraid of the punishment of Allah. And those who, when they spend, are neither extravagant nor miserly. And it is a moderate in between. And those who who do not invoke any God along with Allah and do not kill a person whom Allah has sanctity or whom Allah has given sanctity except rightfully nor do they fornicate and whoever does it shall face the penalty of his sin. So stay away from major sins. These major sins that are described over here, shirk, you know, to associate anyone with Allah, to kill someone, that's another major sin, to fornicate, that's another major sin. I think that's, we have to you know, stay clear of all these major sins. The punishment will be doubled for him and he shall abide in it in abasement forever. Except the one who repents and believes and does good deeds, then Allah will replace the evil of such people by good deeds and Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So everything can be forgiven uh, with Tawbah. When people sincerely ask Allah for forgiveness, then Allah can forgive everything. Whoever repents and does righteous deeds, he rarely turned to Allah with most true repentance and those who do not those who do not witness to what is false and when they pass near senseless things they pass by with dignity two things again of the ibadur rahman qualities that they will not give witness to something that is false and when they pass by places where sin is rampant they will pass as a person quickly passes from a filthy place and those who when they are reminded of the verses of their lord do not fall down as if they are deaf and blind. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَزُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ آيُنٍ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And those who say, Our Lord, give us from our spouses and our children comfort of our eyes and make us the leaders of the righteous. A very comprehensive dua is asking for Allah to give, to make our spouses and our children to be comfort of our, our life and that we be the leaders of the righteous. So it's a dua for the deen and dua for dunya and a dua for the leadership of the rightly guided people. Such people will be rewarded with high places because they observed patience and shall be met in it with greetings and peace living in it forever. How beautiful an abode and as a resting place. The last ayat of, uh, of uh, Surah Furqan. قُلْ مَا يَعْبَوُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْلَا دُعَاؤُكُمْ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَصَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامَ And say, my Lord will never care about you if you do not invoke him. Since Now since you rejected the truth, the punishment will be inseparable from you. So there is no there is no worth in front of the Khaliq. If people do not call him or do not do his ibadat, he doesn't really care. So it's so important for us to inculcate in, among, in ourselves, in our children, in our friends that we must pray to Allah, invoke him, ask Allah. You know, if he, we don't ask Allah, he really won't care for us. Now with this, let's just begin with Surah Shura, which is, uh, the, which is again a Makkan Surah. It's a, it's, although it's a short Surah, uh, but it has a number of ayahs, 227 uh, ayahs in half or less than, about a half a ruku. So, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Tawaseen Meem, so it begins with Huruf and Muqatta, three of them, Tawaseen Meem. These are the verses of a manifest book. So these are illuminating, enlightening revelations. 
uh, once one who takes the benefit uh, will will you know brighten their life it will remove shortcomings and and falls from their own lives perhaps you are going to let yourself collapse in grief because they do not believe so prophet uh, prophet sallam was extremely worried and distressed after seeing that these transgressing people were not accepting his message they were not coming on guidance and to the extent that it really became a life threatening situation for him if we so will we can send down to them a sign from the sky for which their necks will stay bent in submission never a new reminder comes to them from the rahman but they become averse to it thus they reject soon will come to them the news of what they used to ridicule the more allah makes arrangement for their guidance the more distant and indifferent people become instead they just begin to ridicule now there is only one way to make them notice the word of allah and that is to bring the day of judgment in front of them have they not looked at the earth how many of noble pears we have grown in it surely in this there is a sign but most of them do not believe and indeed your lord is mighty and merciful so everything their rab has made is for their benefit there is no gain for the rab uh, he can also bring azab and scrooge on people so that they are forced into submission like the powerful kings do powerful kings bring fear in people to make them submit but allah is merciful he sends his mercy on people and he wants that people should recognize him because of his mercy and his blessings however he is also very swift in retribution remember when your lord called moses saying go to the transgressing people the people of pharaoh do not do not uh, they do not fear allah he said my lord i fear that they will reject me my chest is constrained and my tongue is not fluent so send for harun so what is hazrat musa alai salam saying he saying i am not very eloquent i am not very fluent what we see is that for delivering and spreading the true message we don't have to be great debaters and great speakers lot of people have this fear this inner the the, the feeling of fear being that we are under confident uh, you know Uh, this is actually to be under confident is human it's natural people have the stage fright people have this fear of speaking all we need to do is pray to allah and ask for his help moreover moreover they have uh, they have a charge of offense against me i fear they will kill me so another fear of hazrat musa alai salam was that he had committed a sin he had committed a murder although it was unintentional yet uh, you know he was fearful of that every one of us is afraid of our past none of us is as an angel the real fear people uh, say till you know is that, that that's there in the hearts of people is what will people say till yesterday this he was painting the town red was a party animal and today now they are giving dars that's the fear look at their past and that's what quran makes it over here you may have a you may have sin sinned in the past as long as you have asked allah for forgiveness and you know done a true tauba then that shouldn't really stop you he said by no means so both of you you so both so go both of you with our signs surely we are with you hearing so go both of you to firon and say we both are messenger of the lord of the worlds that you may send the children of israel with us he said did we did we not bring you up among us as a child you remain amidst us for a, for years so firon now comes to the court of uh, you know hazrat musa alai salam comes to the to the court of firon and firon is reminding moses Mo, hazrat musa alai salam oh you are the same musa who came to this palace as a small baby and how much ehsan we did on you we trained you we brought you up and now you have come to us as a thankless person and you did the blunder you did you were ungrateful now he's putting hazrat musa alai salam really on the back foot so that so you know he what he's saying is you have the audacity of coming here and telling me and threatening me do you want me to 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 bring iman on you remember your past criminal record he said i did that at a time when i was mistaken so musa hazrat musa alai salam response is very calm then i fled away from you when i feared you thereafter my lord granted me wisdom and made me one of the messengers so hazrat musa alaihi salam says over here yes i admit yes i made a mistake and this is another quality of a preacher that 
this also shows that messengers were, were, were human beings. They were like us. They were not angels. They also committed things before they became messengers and prophets. As for the favor with which you are obliging me, it is that you have enslaved the children of Israel. So what has the Musa is saying is, well, okay, yes, I did a mistake. I murdered a person unintentionally. But look what you have done. You have enslaved an entire nation. How many people you have killed? Firon said, said, what is the Lord of the worlds? And he, which is as Musa said, Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between them, if you are believers. He said to those around him, do you hear? He said, your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers. So this is Hazrat Musa's response over here. Hazrat Musa as you can see with this very quick, sharp response, calm response, is unconcerned, undisturbed. He is oblivious of the Pharaoh's ridicule. How few, fearful Hazrat Musa was and how confident he speaks now. Simple sentences, simple words. And this is a sign of help from Allah. So much focus on the mission that the surroundings have become unimportant to him. He said, your messenger who is sent to you is indeed a madman. So now you see the, the cool response of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam is irritating and frustrating Firon. Now he's showing his true color. Despite his glamour and his outward power, his real nature is pretty low. He said, which is Hazrat Musa said, Lord of the East and the West and whatever lies between them, if you are to understand. He said, if you adopt a God other than me, I will certainly put you in a prison. He replied, will you do this even if I bring to you something evident? So Musa salam has won the battle. Now he shows the miracle so as to leave no doubt in the minds of people and the minds of Pharaoh. So he has won the argument. Now, it's very important for us to understand is never get annoyed, never get irritated when we are ridiculed. He said, then bring it if you are truthful. So he threw down his staff and in no time it was a snake clearly visible. He then drew out his hand and right then it was glowing white to the onlookers. He said to, his, to the chiefs around him, this man is certainly an expert magician. He wants to expel you from the land with his magic. So what do you suggest? Now, words of Firon immediately, you know, you can see these words. He immediately reached to the bottom line, the root cause. Very clever man, no doubt. Firon was a clever man. Understood the threat posed to his empire. Now, here against him are two old men, Musa alayhi salam, Harun alayhi salam. No power, no army. And it is a, he feels that this is a threat to the 2,000 years old empire. Firon with his army, with his culture, you know, with his well-established city, with great building, with palaces, all of this is nothing against the truth. And these two old men have nothing with them to support except the truth. And you can see how powerless and how worthless these things are. Now you realize why Islam is seen upon as such a great threat, threat in the Western Empire and to the Western culture. They said, leave him and his brother alone for some time and send announcers to the city so that they bring to you every bright expert sorcerer. So the sorcerers were assembled or the magicians were assembled for the appointed time of a known day. And it was said to the people, would you assemble so that we may follow the magician if they are victorious? So when the magicians came, they said to Firon, will there be a reward for us if we are victorious? He said, yes, of course, you will, be, you will then be among the closed ones. Moses said to them, throw down what you throw. So they threw down their ropes and their staff and said, by the majesty of the Pharaoh, we will be the triumph for sure. Then Moses threw down his staff and in no time it started swallowing the falsehood they invented. Truth is light. Light always cuts darkness. When light comes, darkness is bound to vanish. So the magicians were thrown down in prostration. They said, we believe in the Lord of the worlds. The magicians recognized that Musa was what, what he was showing was not a trick. It was not an illusion. This was the reality. Hence, they immediately accepted. The Lord of Moses and Harun. He said, you have believed in him before I permitted you? Surely he is your chief who has taught you magic. So you will soon know. I will cut off your hands and feet from different sides and will crucify you all together. They said, doesn't matter. We will return to our Lord. 
we really hope that our lord will forgive us our faults as we are the first of the believers you can see the change that has come into these magicians all fears all hope from the pharaoh are cut off and this is the first sign that true faith has entered inside their heart all trust in allah only they are only putting their trust in allah and we revealed to moses saying make my servant travel at the night you will be pursued so pharaoh sent in to all the city's announcers saying this is a small band indeed they are enraging us and we are the we are a well armed group thus we expelled them from the gardens and springs and from the treasures and a noble abode thus it was and we made the children of israel inherent inherit all such things so they were pursued so they pursued them at sunrise and when the two hosts saw each other the companions of moses said surely we will we are we are overtaken now you can see the complaining nature of uh, bani israel the people of israel uh, the pretty thankless people despite their freedom now their fear is coming to them they see the red sea in front of them and they see the pharaoh's army pursuing them and they have very little trust on their prophet or on allah he said never indeed with me is my lord he will guide me now look at the response of hazrat musa alaihi salam he doesn't know that the sea is going to part right up till now he doesn't know but he sees the sea in the front and he knows he's trapped the pharaoh army but he has total trust on 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 his rab and he says my rab he will guide me so we revealed to moses saying strike the sea with your staff so it parted and each part became like a big mountain and then we brought them we brought others near and we saved moses and all those with him and then we drowned the others then we drowned the others surely in this there is a sign but most of them do not believe and indeed your lord is mighty and merciful and recite before them the narrative of ibrahim now the story of ibrahim as we know all forms of shirk prevalent during his time uh, during the time of hazrat ibrahim his father uh, azar he used to make idols for the temple when he said to when he said to his father and to his people what do you worship so ibrahim as uh, alayhi salam is asking a question although he knows the answer it's not really like an inquiry but it's more like to draw their attention to make them aware of how unreasonable they are they said we worship idols and stay devoted to them he said do they hear you when you call them or do they bring benefit to you or harm they said no but we have found our fathers doing like this he said have you ever considered what you have been worshiping what hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam is saying is think logically think what you are worshiping you make these deities and idols with your own hands and assume that they have power and then you also fear them you and your ancient fathers they all are an enemy to me except the lord of the worlds who created me and who guides me and who feeds me and gives me drink now who has the given the ability of you know ability to water to satisfy our thirst only allah when we are very thirsty only water can quench our thirst we don't say thank you water we say alhamdulillah to the one who has actually created water we thank him one who has kept this thirst uh, in me made a perfect match to satisfy it by making water and man has we have made such innumerable number of drinks but nothing compares to water tasteless odorless colorless drink yet the most satisfying and when i become sick he heals me who has given the characteristics to medicine to cure same medicine can cure one and cause death in the in another and who will make me die and then give me life so here it is it's made clear you don't need to be desperate real life is still to come there is plenty of time to have fun and enjoyment and pleasure and who i hope will forgive my faults on the day of retribution oh my lord give me wisdom and make and and make me join the righteous so the first prayer of wisdom and wisdom is such a great blessing what is wisdom it's far sightedness that even if you have a temporary loss or a temporary difficulty you sustain it because you know that in future there will be a greater profit and grant me honorable mention in the later generations and make me among those who will inherit the gardens of bliss and forgive my father indeed he is one of those who went astray now this prayer of hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam was not accepted and why was it not accepted because the father never asked him to pray that's one 
and the father never did righteous de deeds. So dua is accepted when the person himself also desires for the same thing and also, also works towards that objective. And do not put me in disgrace on the day when all will be raised to life, the day when neither wealth will be of any use nor sons. Illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim except to him who will come to Allah with a sound heart. Qalb is salim, beautiful word being used over here. Salamat heart. What does, that, what does that mean? That a heart which is free from envy, jealousy, pride, shirk, rebellion, miserliness. Sound heart has trust in Allah. Sound heart has a trust in Allah. And a sick heart will always be a heart which has fear and anxiety. And paradise will be brought near to the God-fearing. And hell will be fully uncovered for the, for the misguided. And it will be said to them, where is that which you used to worship? Besides Allah, can they help you or help themselves? So they, which means their, four, uh, their false gods, will be thrown on their faces into it. They and the er erring people and the entire army of Iblis all together. They will say, when they will be quarreling there with each other, by Allah, we were in open error when we used to equate you with the Lord of the worlds. And it is only the sinners who misguided us. Now we have neither any intercessor nor any true friend. Would that we have a chance to return whereby we may join the believers? Surely in this there are signs among, but most of them do not believe. And indeed your Lord is the mighty, the merciful. The people of Nu rejected the messengers. When their brother Nu said to them, do you not fear? Uh, so, again, like I said, the reason messengers are being denied is because people don't want to change their lifestyle and their priorities, and man is very uncomfortable with change. I am a trustworthy messenger to you, so fear Allah and obey me. I do not claim from you any reward for it. My reward is, is with none, but with the Lord of the worlds. So fear Allah and obey me. They said, shall we believe in you while you are fo followed by the lowest people? He said, I do not know about what they do. Their account is with none but my Lord, if you have sense. So, you know, this is, uh, he, Hazrat Nuh didn't confront them and say, oh, what a class conscious bourgeois you are. What he said is, who is lowly? I don't know. Your criteria is different from mine. In the eyes of the Prophet, the criteria of people who have a high position are those people who have fear of Allah, those people who are obedient to the messenger. And I am not the one who will drive the, the believers away. I am no more than a plain warner. They said, if you do not stop, O Nu, you will surely be stoned. He said, my Lord, my people have rejected me. Therefore, you judge between me and them openly and save me and the believers who are with me. So we saved him and those with him in the laden ark. Then afterwards, we drowned those who remained behind most surely in this there, there is a sign, but most of them do not believe. Wa inna rabbaka lahual azizur rahim, and most surely your Rabb is mighty and merciful. So we stop over here. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafana wa iyyakum bil ayati wa zikr al-Hakim.